Hello and welcome to producer's notes number six for DCS Black Shark. This is the uh, first of a two-part note in which we will take a look at the uh, weapon systems of the K-50 Black Shark. Uh, in this note we will be taking a look at the uh, 2A42 30mm cannon, the UPK-23-250 gun pods, and then we'll wrap it up uh, looking at the uh, the rocket system, the uh, 80 millimeter and the 122 uh, millimeter uh, rockets. Uh, but before we put some uh, rounds down range, we'll go ahead and take a look at some of the uh, control systems. Uh, to start with, we'll go ahead and um, uh, enable the weapon system computer. And now down here, uh, below the television screen, we have the primary weapon control panel. Um, to the left, we have the master arm switch. We'll go ahead and enable that. And to the right, we have a, a diagram of the aircraft. And um, we have the fuselage in the middle and the two stub wings uh, right and left. Now, below, you have uh, four yellow lights. And those represent the four hard points uh, on the wings. Uh, and a active light indicates that there is a store uh, on that station. Uh, green lights um, above the station indicate the station is actively selected. Now, in the Black Shark, you do not actually um, select individual weapons. Rather, what you do is you select the hard points in pairs, either inner hard point or outer hard points. Uh, to do so, um, I generally just use the HOTAS, so I can go ahead and select the inner points. And you notice the uh, inner green lights are active, or I can go to the outer points. Now, when I select um, a set of points, I get some additional data. Uh, here in the store field, you'll notice we have a, what appears to be an HP in English, and that indicates that I have rockets selected. Uh, in the next field, we have the remaining uh, number, and that indicates how many rounds of the selected type are left uh, on the aircraft. Uh, in this case, I have two rocket pods, each pod having uh, 20 rockets, so I have a, a total of 40. And in the third field here is the number of rounds remaining in the cannon times 10. Uh, now, actually, a little aside, you may notice in the cockpit now, um, virtually all the labels um, and warning signs are now in English. And that's something we intend to ship with the product. So back to the cannon. Um, the can itself, again, is the, uh, the 2A42, a 30 millimeter cannon, which is actually the same cannon that is mounted on the uh, BMP, BMP2 infantry fighting vehicle. A uh, very accurate weapon, um, can take out lightly armored vehicles out to 1,500 meters and um, unarmored uh, out to 2,000. Uh, it's mounted on the right side of the fuselage of the COD-50 and actually has the ability to traverse to a degree in azimuth and elevation and uh, automatically lock onto a target that you first designate with the Schwal sensor. The gun itself actually has two different ammo belts. Uh, one for high explosive, HE, and one for armor piercing. Uh, now right now we have the HE selected according to the switch down here, and we see that we have 240 rounds. I can switch this now uh, down to the AP, now I have the AP round selected, and I can see that I have 220 of those uh, on the aircraft. But for now I'll go ahead and I'll put that into the high explosive. Uh, other functions on the panel uh, include a air-to-air -air missile jettison switch, which uh, currently the COF-50 does not uh, have such a capability, so it's inactive. Uh, the next button is your jettison switch, and this will punch everything off the stub wings except for the anti-tank guided missiles. If you do want to uh, eject the anti-tank guided missiles, then you go to this switch, and this will rapidly fire them off, uh, but in a non-guided mode. Uh, between the two is the weapon arm switch in that if you do jettison the weapons you can select to have them armed or un unarmed when they come off the aircraft. Uh, below we have a set of four switches here. Uh, we already talked about the uh, cannon round type selector uh, but over here we have uh, the function switch 
uh, for manual auto, which um, allows you to select such things as automatic tracking, um, uh, automatic or um, uh, restrictions on weaponry release control, uh, and such things, but really not a whole lot applicable to what we're going to be doing here today. Uh, the next is the uh, burst length indicator, and this ranges uh, from 10 rounds per burst up to 20 rounds per burst. And not only does this apply for the cannon, but this will also apply for the uh, rockets as well. Again, we talked about the, um, the round type selector. And then here we have the, um, uh, the rate of fire for the cannon. When in the low setting uh, up, it will fire at 350 rounds per minute. And when it is down, it will fire at 600 rounds per minute. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll keep it up in the uh, low setting for now. Uh, down here, you probably recognize this from the last note. Uh, we can go ahead and put it in training mode or regular army mode. We'll keep it off training. Uh, here we have the um, automatic manual mode uh, for the gun. We can have the gun either automatically slew to a designated target from the Schwal or we can put it in a boresight mode and have the Ishval sensor essentially boresighted uh, to that line of sight. Uh, for now we'll keep an automatic mode. Uh, here we can turn the laser on. And here are the, uh, the general weapon modes. Uh, right now we have the movie mode, uh, which will autom again allow the uh, cannon to be slewed around. Uh, we can put it in the fixed mode. Uh, here we have the mode for uh, backup ATGM. Uh, the next mode allows us to uh, take the functions of the navigation computer to supplement the weapon computer if the weapon computer is damaged. And finally, this is kind of the inverse where we can actually take the weapon computer and assist the navigation functions if the nav system uh, computer is offline. Well, for now, I'll go ahead and put it back into the, um, the automatic movie mode. And come back out. Reset. Okay, uh, so after all of these producer's notes, we're going to fire some weapons now. So first I will go ahead and select the, um, the 2A42 cannon. And when I do that, you'll now notice I have a uh, weapon uh, reticle here boresighted uh, in the center of the HUD. I have my C, which indicates I can launch at any time. And we have radar altitude and a radar altimeter scale. And of course the pitch ladder. Now, if I go ahead and um, lock up a target with a Schwal, I'll go ahead and slew my cannon to that target. So, I'll go ahead and uncage my Schwal. I'll bring it down. It's like a target over here to the right. And zoom in. Looks like a Humvee in a truck. Got him locked up. Okay, so now we have some new symbology up on the HUD. Uh, we have our uh, cannon symbol, and you'll notice now rather than being up here bore sided, it's actually a uh, slave to uh, the target I just locked up. I've got my laser rangefinder uh, ranging, um, same day we saw, we saw before. Also, I have a TA indicating uh, automatic tracking, and also you'll notice a uh, rectangle here. And this indicates the um, azimuth and um, elevation constraints of the cannon. Now, if we come outside, you'll notice that the cannon is actually canned down and uh, to left just a little bit. But it can uh, move up and down, side to side, but it's definitely rather restricted and its ability to slew off to the left uh, given the fuselage. So we have, again, low setting, uh, high explosive, short round burst, locked up. So fire some rounds. Mm 